Hi, I'm Giovanna Sardelli. I'm Artistic Associate and Director of New Works for TheaterWorks Silicon Valley. And I want to begin by acknowledging that TheaterWorks offices and theaters are on the traditional and unceded territory of the Ramatush Ohlone peoples. I'm currently on Southern Paiute land, which is more commonly referred to as Las Vegas. And we encourage you to learn about the land you're on wherever you're tuning in from. And we thank you for tuning in for a conversation with playwright and actress extraordinaire, Lisa Ramirez. And I can say that because I've had the pleasure of directing Lisa. So I know that she is actress extraordinaire. So beyond Lisa's many credits as a writer and performer, which are listed on our website, Lisa is right now performing live live people in the Bay Area. She's doing the Wasteland for Oakland Theater Project, where she's also the Associate Artistic Director, and people are going crazy for the show. It is running now through May 16th, which uh, is remarkable, Lisa, because you're doing your one-woman show, Pas de Deux, Lost My Shoe, as part of our New Works Festival online on Saturday, May 15th at 2 p.m. So how, how does that work for you? Can you describe that, that day to me? <laughs> that day is going to be like the uh, similarities to every other day is that I wake up super early. Only this time I will be driving to Palo Alto and working with Jeffrey Lowe um, for hours and hours. And um, then I will head back to a parking lot in Oakland and go into a uh, T.S. Eliotville. Uh, Lisa, can you can you tell us what Pas de Deux Lost My Shoe is about? Sure. Pas de Deux Lost My Shoe is about uh, reckoning with the death of my brother, Sean, who was a ballet dancer with the Oakland Ballet for 15 years. He lost uh, a battle with alcoholism. And I am sober many years, and it's my way of both honoring him and reckoning with why I survived and he didn't, and also retracing his steps through me, who's not the most graceful person in the world, taking ballet, which was his profession, and um, to, in order to understand him and retrace his steps. And Lost My Shoe is just kind of a how I felt, like Pas de Deux is a dance for two, for, for people that don't don't know that. Um, and Lost My Shoe was just how I felt because he was sort of like, you know, so it's like when you're walking and it's also like something that happens to drunk people, you know, um, like sometimes, you know, how you just see a shoe on the street and you're like, what happened to the other shoe? There's a story there, you know, so I kind of had this whole thing about like walking with one shoe. Um, so there's many meanings to it. Like, where's my brother? I lost my brother. And, um, where's my shoe? So it's both like tragic and humorous, which is where I like to teeter in my life, in my work. I think it's what um, drew me to that piece immediately. I mean, uh, so many families go through that. My family, my older sister passed away uh, from her drug addiction. And I, part of what drew me to your beautiful story was the grace with which you deal with it, but also the irreverent humor. Um, all the ways people survive grief. And I, I just think your story is kind of a lesson for uh, a country that is in national grief on some level to tune in and find a way out because that's the story. Right. It, it started, the play, the piece actually started at, at the Cherry Lane Theater in New York, which is where we originally met, yeah. uh, you and I. and. Uh, it started with a conversation with Angelina Fiordalisi, who was a uh, mm -hmm. founding artistic director. And um, she was asking me, she had seen another solo show that I had written, Exit Cuckoo, Nanny and Motherland, and uh, asked me if I would wanted to write something. Uh, she was featuring solo performers that year, women in particular. And so that that's where it started. And then when it, you know, I had a great experience with that. I worked with um, Cynthia Hopkins was my mentor and Brian Davidson Blue was the director of the piece. But um, when you asked me years later to uh, be part of the, the, um, the workshop or the retreat, the virtual retreat, 
then I was able to pick it up with fresh eyes, you know, almost, almost eight years or 10 years, I'm not sure have gone by. And so I was able to really, I've been writing other things and doing other things. It was great to have all that time in between to then revisit it. And then I think we had a conversation where it was like, oh, wow, I missed, I think I, I, I just got to the end. I missed like three decades. So now I'm very excited about the opportunity to go into those decades and then explore it like anew with Jeffrey Lowe um, at, at you guys' space, which is the first scene of the play is where I was born in Palo Alto. I, which is I, hilarious. <laughs> that is, yeah, that is a crazy connection. It's so funny to meet you, I, you meeting you in New York and then we find our, our way in the Bay. And I, I love that, that our, that our relationship is now transcontinental. I love it. Yes. Next we'll be in Paris. Oh, yes. Yes, please. Um, and I just want to say for those people who don't know uh, that uh, the writer's retreat that you were referring to is it's a one week retreat. We bring writers together who are in all stages of development on their pieces. And you worked with the wonderful actress and director Rako Aylesworth on That's that right. one. That's right. Yeah. And that just the work you did that discovery of cracking open all those decades. I can't wait to see um, the extended story. Yes, yes. How, besides the um, invitation from Angelina, how do you find your way from grief to art? Is there? Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really lucky in that I was, uh, raised by the mother that I was raised by. And I can say that as an adult because she has probably has the best sense of humor of anyone I've ever met. And we have had a lot of, um, I'll say, you know, challenges in, in, in our lives as a family or, you know, and, and she was always like, just at the worst possible moment, there would be like this hilarious one-liner. Like, well, at least we're not, whatever. Well, da, 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 da. can you imagine if we were, you know? And uh, so I think that in a way that, I mean, that might be the Irish side of the family, you know, like that, 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 that like side of the side of the mouth humor, like kind of like, well, <laughs> at least we're not, you know, we're in a hole, but at least we're not in a ditch or whatever, you know? And also there's that whole great, I remember reading, um, Harold Clerman from the group theater, the founder of the group theater saying, and this is paraphrasing, but the truth is like castor oil. It tastes horrible. Um, but, but in, in order to uh, give people the truth, you have to make them laugh first. And when their mouths are open, pour the truth in. So like that is, that's what I try to do. I never like to get too dark, although I explore a lot of dark territory. Wow. That's Hearing that your piece now makes so much more sense because that was one of the things that astounded me about it is that tightrope dance you do where you yeah, are. I mean, just me in a tutu is just like pure comedy, like me in a prima ballerina <laughs> outfit and a tiara because Sean, like we used to once like let me put on toe, like toe shoes and I was like getting foot cramps and he was like laughing hysterically because I, I you know, when I was little, I, I wore a brace on my leg and my father or what, what wanted me to take ballet, right? To straighten it out or whatever. And um, Sean was really the dancer. And so me taking ballet is hysterical because like one of the opening lines is I hate ballet. I fucking hate it. <laughs> I hate everything about it. And then I list why, but then I list say that I love my brother. So Anyway, it's also, it's a gift. It's a gift to write about somebody that's not, you know, earthbound, you know, like some people call it a requiem, requiem, you know, or a mm. ceremony or a... Wow. That's, I, I wasn't thinking of it like that. And when you say it, that's how it feels in the heart. That's... Well, he'd be laughing. He would be laughing. He'd be like, oh my God, because it's like, it, he'd be laughing both that I'm in a tutu, but he'd also be laughing that I talk too much. 
I'm not going to say too much. I'm going to say... According to him. <laughs> Got it. According to us, it's mm -hmm. great. According to us, you know, we're, we're going to ask people to come and see you talk a lot. So I love it. <laughs> um, I want to know, I, just, I have, I think, one more question for you because I'm always fascinated by uh, multi-talented people. Did you begin as an actress or a writer or have you always kind of done both? No, I started out as an act, an act, I've been acting like over 30 years and probably writing 15, 12 or 15. Um, uh, but I always admired writers. I always, I was always that actor in the room that would be upset when actors would paraphrase during a, like a table read or something like to, or that they would like try to contemporize like, you know, their own, like, you know, you or whatever, like, I'd be like, I, you know, cause I, <laughs> For me, the written word is like sacred. And so I've always admired writers. I was a literary director for a theater uh, mm -hmm. in, in San Francisco many years ago, Brava for Women in the Arts. And I saw women like Ellen McLaughlin uh, go from acting to writing, mm -hmm. Julie Bear. You know, that um, I was able, during that time to meet Irene Forness and, and take workshops with her. And then I have so many it was all women playwrights, right? So all I did was read. That was my job was to read for a few years. And it was like, like Dahlia Cruz, Naomi Azuka. Like I said, Ellen McLaughlin. You know, I mean, there's so many. I I could I could give you a list of 100 playwrights that I read that I love. Sheree Moraga, you know. Oh, I love it. You just, uh, you just got yourself an invitation to be on the reading committee. <laughs> <laughs> for plays for theater I'll work. Be on the reading committee, <laughs> my theater. But I, I, yeah, okay, I'll be it. I'll do it. I love it. Well, it's so funny hearing you talk about the written word and your love and respect for it. Now I understand why all the writers that I know who've worked with you love what you do as an actress, and why um, I respond to your writing and your acting. And I'm, I am so delighted that you are part of this festival. I cannot wait for people um, to see your work. Mm -hmm. And I just, I wanna thank you so much for being part of this conversation today and being part of our first ever online festival. I promise we're gonna get you actually in our spaces very, very soon. I can't wait, I can't wait. It's, I love working with you and I love working with Jeffrey. Yeah. And uh, I'm very excited to like literally be back in my hometown soon. We love it. And thank you. Thank you, Lisa. And thank you. Thank you.